Today, I'm going to make an improved version of my pellet chopper that is a lot faster. Welcome to another episode. So in this episode, I'm going to make a new version of the pellet chopper and it is a lot faster. As I mentioned in the intro, it can chop up a roll of filament in about 15 minutes. So that's uh, one kilogram of filament in 15 minutes, which is quite nice. So let me show you uh, how I did that. I replaced the uh, battery powered drill with uh, a corded electric drill, <clears throat> which also allows me to get a little bit faster speed. And then I also 3D printed a screw that pushes on the trigger so I can control the speed of the motor. So let me turn this on and you'll see how fast it goes. Uh, in particular, watch this. Here's how uh, fast it turns. And, uh, this is the electric drill I bought from Harbor Freight. And it's a 0 to 1500 RPM drill and this has a very nice amount of movement. So the idea is I want to create a mechanism that allows me to use a bolt to screw in and slowly and precisely control the speed of this motor by pushing this in a fixed amount. So that means I want to make something that goes around like this. It basically pulls in here and then the screw pushes in here and then I want something to go on this trigger and the whole thing should constrain it so it stays in place. So I, I, on the computer I uh, came up with the initial design and I printed out a few pieces. And I printed them out, I used the trick that I used before, which is I print a, print it out at you know fairly thin layer height so that I can test it out and see if it fits. And so I can put this on here and put it down near the bottom and you can see that fits in there. And then I need to put this on the trigger and put this in there. Okay, so that's about there. And then put this part on the back. And what I discovered when I did this is that it all seemed to fit just fine. So I was good to go to actually make a full print, at least of some of these parts. The other thing is I wanted to get the curved surface back here. So the way that I dealt with that is I used a simple protractor. What I wanted to do is get you know this angle here and get this angle and then basically interpolate in between to get this curve. And then I also want and then I also measured this width here, you know, right there, and then just assume this was a circle as a starting point, which is uh, so for the circle, that's how I got this uh, part here. But for the angles, as I say, I used a simple protractor. And then what I did is try to make this horizontal like about right there and then just eyed down here to see about what the angle would look like. And this says it's on the order of five or six degrees right there. And then if I go to the top right here, and look at this angle, it's on the order of 12 degrees. So that allowed me to create a control curve that will allow the loft to be curved this way. So I can take this curve here and then loft it. Now, when I did that, I ended up with this right here. And the first time I did it, the angle wasn't quite right. So then I tried it again, you know, with some adjustments, as I mentioned. And the angle is pretty much dead on, or at least close enough. So that was good. The other thing that I did is I, I printed a block, like so. And the first version of the block did not have an angle here because I didn't realize that there was an angle there. But the second version of the block, if I put it on correctly, you can see these two pretty much line up in this direction. So now it was good to go ahead and print the whole thing. 
And let me show you the first version that I printed. I've got this around the cord right now. So this is the version that I printed and I made it in two pieces so that I could uh, put it around here and then put this in place. And of course, what I didn't realize at the time, which is obvious now, is it doesn't need to be two pieces because if it goes over the cord, you can see you can put it into place quite easily. And then I need this uh, trigger guard here. Let's see with the, this way. I've got the, uh, I can feel this is the smooth edge. So this was on the, the bed of my printer. And so the smooth edge goes in here like so. And I need to loosen the screw a little bit. Let me tip this up so you can see how that works. So this goes in place like so. And then this, there's a little hole in there for the screw. And now when I screw that in, you'll notice that as I screwed in more, it's starting to push on the trigger and push the trigger in, which is the whole idea. Once I realized that I didn't need two pieces, I also realized I could make it a nicer looking piece with uh, more curves in it. So the way this works is I have this uh, standoff or coupler, not really sure what it is, but a piece of hex that's threaded all the way through. And that goes, if I don't throw things around, that goes into this slot here, which holds it nicely in place. And then I can just put the the bolt or the screw in like so. And then it comes out the other end. Then I just throw this over the cord. And then that in turn, and I just realized I have it upside down. Again, there is a right side up and an upside down because of the curve on the back here. Okay, so you can see that fits on there really nicely. And then I'll get the trigger piece, which uh, again, I'm feeling on the bottom to, to see which is the smooth side because that's what was touching the bed. And then I can put this in here, like so on the trigger. And then just as before, screw the screw into the hole on the, the trigger piece. And now it's all set to go. Now. You may have noticed that I have an extra nut here. This is the locking nut. So once I get this to the speed I want, then I can lock this in place. And, you know, this will keep it from moving. So that way, whenever I turn the power strip on that controls both the drill and the stepper motor, this will come back on at the same speed every time. I built a box to hold everything. And the one thing I discovered is that even with rubber pads on the bottom of this, it still wants to walk around. So I put a piece across here and then I have a clamp that allows me to clamp it to the table so it doesn't walk around. Here's the other side. You can see that uh, you know, everything is sitting on top. I've got a, a little foam pad underneath here to help with the vibration. So let me turn on the drill and get started. I was having problems with the drill slipping and you can see some marks on here uh, from the drill slipping probably. So I decided to uh, grind some flats on here and I've already ground one flat, but I, I need three because there are three jaws on the chuck. So what I've done is I've created this 3D printed triangular piece that will allow me to line this up. And then once I have it lined up, like so. 
then I can just tighten the screw. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and uh, grind the other two sides. You can see I now have uh, three flat sides ground on it. And they're not exactly the same, but they should be close enough. So I can just go ahead and remove this. And this is just held on by, there's not even a nut in here. It's just the friction of the screw on the plastic. And then it just comes out like so. So I'll put it back in the screwdriver and see if that is any better. Now, as I'm tightening this, I want to wiggle this to make sure that the jaws are in the middle of the flats rather than on the end of the flats so that I, it truly is tight. This is a trick I learned about recently. I was having problems with this moving all over the place, so I did a couple things. The first is I got a little bit of uh, this rubber mat that I can put down here. The other thing is I made these a little bit longer so that the it would require more force to pull it over. And then the final thing is making sure that the filament is coming up. So I want to go like this, and that way it will be pulling it this way. So if the filament is pushing this way, it can easily push this over the, pull this over the center and cause it to come off the rollers, where if it's coming up from below, it's not likely to do that. So let me set this up and start chopping and see how that is. Ran into another issue, which is the screws came off because of the vibration. So I'm going to replace the nuts that I had on here with nylocks and that should keep it in place. And I'm going to go around and check everything else because there's a lot of uh, vibration from this, which is while it's running. You can see it, it broke. And what happens when it breaks there, which is along the lamination lines, is it allows the cutter to flex too much and then it doesn't work anywhere near as well. So I need to redo this. I might, uh, I mean, at some point, I think I'm going to turn this into a metal part that's milled. For the moment though, what I'm going to do is make this so that it's two parts held together with some bolts and uh, screws. And so it'll have the part with the lamination lines as you see it here. Then I'll have another part going this way where the lamination lines are this way. And so that means it'll be strong in this axis as well as this axis to back this up. And that should uh, keep it from delaminating. Uh, or at least make it more effective until I have a chance to mill a version of this out of probably aluminum. I thought this was going to be the last episode, but you know, obviously because of the break here, I'm going to have to do another version. And as I mentioned, I'm going to do another version out of printed uh, PLA to at least get me going. I might also try uh, PETG because I have some of that. But I think what I really want to do, considering how much vibration I get in this, is redesign this so that I can make it out of aluminum and uh, mill this. Uh, so that'll be a future episode, but at least now I have something that will allow me to finish chopping up some rolls of filaments that I have in the color that I wanted so that I can make some injection molded parts in that color. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found something interesting. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.